Nicholas, I must say uh, thank you very much. You've got it on the nail. You know, really, if you look at your conclusion, that first one, it actually makes me cold. Because they, if you unpack that, it is really something that uh, we've all got to say. And uh, what I'm trying to bring to the party might address that as well, about employment and FTEs. I, uh, I agree with you 100% there. I think, uh, thank you for City of Cape Town. You've put a nice uh, playing field for me that I can actually address now. And looking at the green economy, is anybody a businessman around here? Has anybody ever tried to sell or create a market for butchers? So we've got a green economy and we've got nobody looking at a market. Oh, you? Fantastic. So we've got one person looking for a market. Were you successful? Yes. 200,000? Can you take that? 200,000 times in a year? No. So we need a bit more work on it. If we've got a green economy, you've got a market, and the thing is green, I presume. And that's our family. That's basically that. Now we can go and have a beer. Or should I go through the door? Okay. <coughs> Let me drop. Right, then we speak to the, the good doctor. He's a few of these words you must, you must look at, you must actually see what he's talking about, you know. What does he mean, adopt? We heard a lot of adapt and adopt, new, prudent, respectful ways, managing. These are words that, you know, you believe it and you think nothing of it. But look at it again and again. This is actually what we're trying to do, where we're trying to go with it. So those are the persons that you were talking about, Nicholas. And you, they can't stop and start. They can't work three months and then three months in the next year. They have to carry on forever. And you, we, we need the training to, to take them on, you know, to, that they keep those skills. So after 100 years of weed control, okay, it was biological, we are closing down on the solution. And that's what I'm going to give you today. We have a great opportunity in 250 million tons of alien plant biomass available in South Africa. We just need a market. So we're going to create a market. So I've learned a few simple lessons from a businessman. That's a green businessman, and he's in Cape Town. The solution is very simple. It's created by the green economy and used in rugby. It says use it or lose it. And in our case, if we don't use it, it just grows bigger and bigger. So we have to create a value for that. So if you look at the burger, we had a pilot area there, of which a lot of you have visited before. And uh, what we did is, we did an extensive sort of like a PR system of getting everybody that we could and taking them to this two kilometer zone that we cleared and trying to find out what their views are. So if they phone me and a lot of these private entrepreneurs phone you and they want to go now, then I'll go now and I go and take them there. And we had about, say about 15 of them and they all going to take everything and everything. And we ended up with one that has now stayed with us and of which I'm going to report now as a, which could be seen as a solution. So we took it right from the beginning of the Berg River. We took it at Langerach in Selmosh. You can see where the pollution comes from. You can see, you could actually see this actually feeds the biomass. This is why the biomass probably grows so quickly. It's because of the pollution in the river. So let's have a look at this private firm called BEST. It's Biomass Environmental Sustainable Technologies. I think that's the company's name. It's finalized a contract to sell biomass to international. And uh, they have got internal and international markets to the value of 20,000 tons. And it's going up to 200,000 tons when it's at full speed. What are they doing with the biomass? Paper? Going to India. Cardboard? Also to India. By the way, when they send out the planks to India, they send them out in a pole. It's a biomass less than 250 uh, millimeters diameter. They get to the other side, due to the density, if you chip it beforehand, it, it's not as dense as when you put it in a container in poles. Poles fit perfectly into a container, normally uh, about a 12 meter container. It gets to the other side, you've got two where they boil it, you make pulp, you've got a soft pulp, and you've got the hard pulp. The soft pulp makes your papers of various qualities and your cardboard. The hard pulp they use to, find, uh, to, to uh, burn in their furnaces to produce that pulp. So it's a completely self-sustaining system. 
You know, that's why I said, uh, we won't pay the fat king South Africa. We may be going to have to think of 250 million tons. Maybe we should think of something about it. The Superwood is an absolutely excellent project. Housing is a newest project where they take plastic and wood chips and they mix them together. A very good conductivity and they're going to make some lovely houses for us, which will then uh, hopefully last long and be a nice greenhouse. Cars, they're using some of the some of the plastic glues inside the wood chips to make the interiors of cars. So if, you put, if you're fortunate enough to have a Mercedes Benz one of these days, you will see it's also part of the green economy over there. Chips for energy, that's absolutely <coughs> something that we can, it's definitely on the board over there and it's something that's there. And then lastly, the most, the most green use and the most agricultural use, and that's why I'm over here, is compost or mulch. <laughs> So it's not too sure if the compost is going to be better than the mulch. The few researchers that have taken place don't show too much difference between the two products. Where is it going? China, India, Turkey, and now in South Africa. It's challenging but very positive news. But as I can see from here, and I don't have to look too far, you don't believe me. Now that's quite correct. Remember, we are mainly a public organization. And we have to set an enabling environment for a private organization to do this type of thing. So did you think that the Department of Economic Affairs is going to phone India, Rastastan, and go to the firm and go and visit them, go through all the protocols to find out if they could deliver them wood chips? Do you think we can expect that? I don't think so. So it's a private company. We have to learn how to work with private companies. Mainly, we're very skeptical about that. So this is the adapt in management, is the adapt between our two ears in the market that we're using. And we're going to all have to do it. It is challenging, but we're going to have to do it. I've put in a few photographs, because I know there's some people over here that don't like reading too much, and they like some nice photographs over here. Let me give you this. This is the Burger River Project, 260 kilometers, 100. 1,500 hectares of blue gum trees up to more than 100 years old. You can imagine. Take six of you, holding hands, you go around the tree. Big stuff. 20 tons of biomass in the top. You can imagine. Look what that river system looks like. Completely red. At least the RP showed a few, you know, uh, palmita and stuff. This thing is just, just about got nothing in it. So if you take the water that that's using, I could establish 50 30 farms of 50 hectares, which is too big for a farm actually, under irrigation. But 30 farmers I could establish by just taking out those areas. And there could be new farmers that we could have right there next to the burger. You know, there's a farm that's been sold for, 40, <coughs> for 48 million rand, the extra the must for some time. The type of soil it's got on it is four or five meters deep, rich, red, Hutton soil. You will get that nowhere else, except for a few patches in the Western Cape. And we can't get that type of thing leave off our shores. It's gone now to a Spanish country, but at least they're taking over everything and working within the government, within our, in our sense. But if we're talking about land reform, that's the type of stuff we, we have to cash for that type. I've got about 30 farms here. Each farm giving 40,000 person days of employment. 40,000 person days of employment. Which one of us gives 40,000 person days of employment? You understand? It's not public, it's private. We have to enable the private to give this type of employment. I'm see, I'm going to just give you a few indicators because I can see the believing isn't there and I can imagine why. So I'm going to call them BEST. So BEST has invested approximately 20 million rand into the business proposition. 20 million rand. That's not luck. If you doubt the figures, I'll give you all the details and we can have a visit and we can have a look at this stuff. And especially the city of Cape Town. Let's see what we can win out of this thing. The company selling the steam generated, uh, replacing coal, is in Cape Town. I can give you the name of the company. They've sold the first contract to Power Post or Power Media which is a company in a pulp factory in Montague Gardens. 
So they've got a 10 ton, um, what do you call this, furnace. We've got 4,000 <coughs> tons of furnaces in the Western Cape that we can replace with this chip technology, which is the same. A ton of chips and a ton of coal is the same with the new technology that they've got. Can you imagine if we did something like that? So we take out all the small furnaces and take them out in one go like that. That has been signed, it'll be launched. They don't want to launch it before it is actually working. So I'm listening to them, it's their, it's their project, or it's their, their thing. But it's absolutely, it, it actually makes me cold to think of, that we're burning this stuff when we could be using it. Besta saw several biomass sources. They're even speaking to forestry. So they went to the Department of Forest, uh, my department, the National Department, and they started to try and get some, some wood from them. I can tell you it's, it's quite uh, amusing to listen to the conversation of what actually goes on because you can't believe a private company's probably never asked them before and if they can buy their alien plants, you know what I mean? And now they come up with barriers instead of seeing the opportunities. So I hope my, it's my department, so let's, let's hope we can speak a bit better to these guys and get them right. They have meetings with several international and national companies. They've even been to ESCOM. They've even been to the ports. Even the port of Cape Town, which is a national, which is a bit of a problem for most of the provinces because they run national. Even them, they want a generation on their area that's just from green fuel. So all these things are starting to go. Economic Affairs didn't do that, or Department of Agriculture, or Environmental Affairs didn't do that. You need this private. We need the key, the glue that we've left out for a hundred years is the private. He's the one that we've left out. Maybe it's time to bring him in. Best is clearing in Roosevelt in Wellington with a new bark stripper. It clears more than a few hectares in one day. And it's so clean, clean. We couldn't ask for a better site. Okay, don't ask if they do the herbicide and the, and, and herbicide and the stumps as well as they should, but neither do we. So who are we pointing a finger? You understand? So they're doing it okay. Best they set up a sawmill to find out different types of wood they can use and what they do. And they're even employing 46 people full time. The one little company started, 46 people. When they run and up and running full time, they should be going to 150 full-time employees. So they're already creating a lot of work. And you saw the full-time equivalents that we're using and the money we're using. So best clean four kilometers of the burger for nothing. Didn't clean in. They said that they sprayed the, the trees, but they did come up. I'm going there, I'm just doing the following. That's all I'm doing. But they cleaned it. You know, 50,000 rand a hectare to clean those trees in the burger. It's not 3,000 rand, 50,000. They did that. They have a market. They wouldn't do it if they don't have a market or have exploration to actually have a market. Well, I don't know if you believe now. Maybe if we had a few more firms, you'd believe. Or maybe with everything goes, you'll only believe then. But we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have to start you know, thinking this is possible. Look at that. That guy slept for about three nights before he cut that tree. That tree's over 100 years old. Remember two centimeters on a blue gum per year as a drop. So that's about 100 years ago. We cut it perfectly over there. And all that biomass could fuel the green economy. And it could fuel our economy in South Africa. So what do we want out of the deal? We want a clean river where all the alien plant biomass has been removed. That's what we want. We all want that. Uh, we want to conduct a river management and maintenance plan. That includes all the owners, all the uni uh, municipalities, everybody together that they buy in for a 20-year plan. Not this thing for six months, but one for 20 years. That's the one that we want. That's the MMP plan that we want. Then we can move in and manage the follow-up of the, of the land with the land. Not without him, not telling him what to do, not being arrogant like uh, we can do in agriculture. Let's move in, do it with him. Let's manage the rehabilitation with the landowner. He's the one, he's the key. Remember, he's also a private entrepreneur. And develop a value for the new green 
teeming resource. In most cases, this is development or agritourism. I spoke to a few political guys, and they said, if we have a plan down the river, and down the Berg River, that we got a route from the Berg River Dam, going all the way down to Felker, on either side and back again, which you could either ride with a bicycle, you could walk, you could run, you could canoe. Some places you, you can even go with, uh, with, with uh, uh, horses. Even. They say the value of the property immediately, once you've done that, will increase by 20%. So everybody's property in 260 kilometers will increase with 20%. You can imagine the value you're bringing to that resource. You can imagine the guides that we need, the people that are getting employment, the, uh, the bed and breakfast that are going to come up. At the moment, it's a, it's a backyard of everybody's property. They throw everything they don't want over there. Let's make it now the front. They're going to clean it up. They're not going to let tourists run and go over there. We could, I spoke to a farmer the other day. I said, what are you saying now? You're going to say no to 20,000 tourists walking down here one day and back up again? And you sell olives? You sell wine? Got accommodation? That is a thing that's going to drive this and to sustain it in the end. Right, uh, where was I? Get the landowners and commitment and hand over the plan to them. Then we monitor them. And we just monitor. See if it's, if it's working. What can we do just to steer the ship on the right level? and target our resources into that one. Are you starting to at least believe that we have been doing the right thing the wrong way? Or at least without keeping the end in mind, like you, thank you, you said we've never really kept the end in mind. Well, why do we clean the aliens, you know? Why do we clean them in the river? I know they must go out where we must give employment. Or, or why do we clean? Do we keep the end in mind when we're doing a delta? It's always nice to do that. Let's see if we've got another photograph. You ever seen a, a chip on like State of the art, Mark 1. Mark 2 is on its way, and Mark 3 is already being designed. 30 of them on a, on a backboard. 30 of these on a backboard. I can't move that far. I can't think that far. Only a private emperor, in, a private businessman can think that far. You understand? You know what he's seeing already? He's gone to the company that supplies ESCOM with coal. ESCOM doesn't supply itself, it puts it out in tender. And the company that got the tender is a European company. And he's gone to speak to them and say to them, what is ESCOM doing about the green economy? Can't we start introducing 15% of the coal replacing it with wood chips? 15%! We'll have to be planting the stuff if we go that. And there's your chipper, that's Mark 1. Look at this guy standing in the back here, in the front here. He is, without looking at the chip, just listening to the chip now. Three million rand machine he's, he's operating with. Yeah? Not too shabby for skill development. So what are we talking about at the cost at this stage? I put it into paragraphs. This is an application I sent to, to some international firm, which I don't think they should actually fund it. I think we should fund it within... I think before I leave on Friday, we should have this thing funded there. Yeah. <laughs> Take that further from me. Right. So if I leave it in your capable hands, then I'll just have a few beers and we'll come back to it. So if you look at the removal of the Berg River, the 1,500 hectare, and that, that's a czar I could put in that lovely word in it because otherwise I wouldn't understand it, you get to 75 million rand. Sorting, we say no, it doesn't cost anything. It costs a lot of money to sort the stuff. Rehabilitation, far too little I put on the budget. Follow-up, far too little, maybe. Tourism, five million, get that thing. If you can put, if you spend five million rand and get the tourism, I can tell you that route will probably be anything in the Western Cape that you can throw. It is unbelievable walking next to a river. And then you in a vineyard. Then you're in a wine cell. Then you have the prison that President Mandela was released. You, you've got everything right on your doorstep. You don't need any more than that. They'll come from all over the world. It'll be fantastic. Look at the guides and all the business that goes with it. Nevertheless, let's get back to it. And we get awareness, we get a million rand. I suppose that should give a, 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 a lot of pamphlets and just to get the, you know, just get, get that vibe. A million rand is maybe a little, too little, but let's say it's a good start. This is just what I put on the budget for them. To give you another thing, that's what we're looking at. Remember, 
keep the end in mind. Don't look at the money now and come a small change to me before I leave on Friday. I want the money, okay? But keep this in mind. Right. So we want we want private investment, we want public investment, and we want it community owned. So we want this thing to work forever. You understand? We want a plan for it to work forever. Right, here's the plan. So we say to the removal guys, okay, the private company, you take 60 million of the cost, the project, you take 15, so we carry on here, you can see between government costs, the project cost is the one that I used for international, was that one, or it's the one that we could fund ourselves in our own, and we can keep the government costs as well. A lot of the government costs we've already funded, so they're already available. So there's, you could say the project costs are new costs. Now you would say, how do I get to that? That 60 million and that uh, 3 million going to the company. All that they're asking, at the end of the day, and you just deal, that is sort of, you're not allowed to make a deal if you're a public servant. So you can lose your job if you negotiate. So let's say we're just talking about it. Is we take everything that is not using, and we buy it from them at 100 rand a ton on the way bridge, the closest way bridge to where that project is at that time. Should it be in the river or wherever it is, 100 grand a ton for everything he's not going to use. Okay? Have you got that? <coughs> Let's go and have a look what we have. We've got 750,000 tons just in the burger of material that must be, re it, it must be removed. You can't leave it. It must be removed. That that you put into heaps is fantastic and then you burn it. We have to add value, exponential value. We have to start adding value. We can't have a green economy where we start burning things, unless you're making energy or something out of it. Can you imagine something like that? It's unbelievable, but it, it, it's real. This is what happens in the bird. Right, let's have a look at this exponential growth. Come on, I'm wrapping up now. I see you're getting very thirsty. You drink a lot of <laughs> What breathes far faster than the rabbit? Means more to the economy than money, improves human health, and is free. It's the underground. It's a fungi, a bacteria, and the whole combination of that wildlife under the ground. The predators, the Kemp's pocket, the spring pocket, whatever it is under the ground of which we only know 7%. We only know the function of 7% of the biology under the ground. But that is the exponential growth. So if you take 1,500 hectares times 500 tons, which is the estimate we get to the uh, 750,000 in the river alone, but if you take it a million hectares of invasive plants in South Africa and take them at 250, then you get to my sum I started with, 250 million tons. It's a fantastic opportunity. So that's the leaves and the small branches that gives me 150,000 tons at 100 rand a ton chip at the way bridge. And from the way bridge, the farmer takes it to his farm and his own, and he uses it there. So he used five tons mulch or compost per hectare. Some of it would have to be uh, composted a bit. It's going to, now I'm looking at my target, my national targets. I want to say 10% in water, in irrigation water. I'm going to get at least 15%. If it's a sandy soil like the Cape Flat, I'm going to get 35%, probably. I'm going to get a 10% increase in soil fertility. If I measure it in the biological sense, in fertility, we are really taking bi biology into, into consideration in a seven year period. So I've got an investment for a seven year period that gives me 50% saving in irrigation and 10% increase in soil fertility every year. The exponential part is that soil has now more biological life in a, in a, in a handful of soil than there are people that ever lived on the earth. But now I thought, I've lost you now completely, but anyway. Just try and fathom that, that, that you're not going to believe that if, you, if you're thinking with an old hat. But that's the biology, that's the part we as humans don't understand. We don't even understand our topsoil. So we don't understand where the exponential growth is. But if you can sort of fathom something like that, that's where we're going to have to go. That's where we're going to have to, I can see it. I can see it's going to happen. It's going to bring the value that we need. So let's have a look at a few initiatives just to bring you on to 
stop most of the river. The good news is the clearing is going well. The municipality working for water, agriculture, the farmers, private business, everything's going to below the dam. The Boat River Task Team is humming. Hey, man. They're appointing people on contract that are going to work specifically with that to take that over to the when they catchment management. Business. The Brede is busy with seven management maintenance plans. One of them is already appointed an implementing agent. It's looking fantastic. You know, Pokma is getting money and allocating, targeting money to their target areas on those plans. It's it's looking fantastic. Rehabilitation is taking place from environmental affairs a kilometer either side, actually four kilometers either side of the river at Dalma. What have they got in their mind? They're going to rehabilitate that river the way it looked 300 years ago. So if you go past there, keep that in mind. What you see, they've got that in mind, what happened 300 years ago. They're going to start planting next month. That's the seed that they picked last year. They've got a three-year contract that's been put out that they still just have to award. It's a bit expensive at this time. That's that machine I told you about, the private company. If you had to get that, you see that head of that machine? I need that head of that machine. Okay, I'm a government employer. I need that head. I need that head. Okay? Three years later, I might have it through my log system. You understand? <laughs> Two weeks later, this guy's got it delivered and it's working. The guy that we bought it from, that person comes up. He assembles it, he gets the thing working, more than two hectares is clearing in a day. And he's stripping it apart, cutting it into lengths and export. Private business. This is just a few initiatives, it's very small, just showing we are applying for funds from agriculture's part, water affairs, universities, municipalities, environmental affairs. I hope I haven't left anybody out there. But we, we, we're all getting there, but we have to manage this thing together. And now we're going to have to use another mindset. So we're going to have to not be so dubious of private sector and exception. Right, the way forward, we're going to have to put on a new app. We're not going to solve this problem, as they said, by using the same head that we use to let the problem grow under us for 50 years. So you know, you know the city of Cape Town, it was great. I can, I can see you speaking to the, those, those guys in the council, you know. We're going to have, you, you've got the right way. I really think you must turn them around this. Now you're going to have to use another head and we're going to have to solve this problem. There's a great opportunity for funding this project, but I'm going to leave that up to Kim. So anybody that wants to fund this project, you go to speak to Kim and uh, she's going to handle any of that. And remember the great gains in the thing. If you look at the Burger, uh, River Pilot area, you know, you forget about it. You might, Vessel might be there. And if it gets to go and have a look at that area, you know, the bird life is unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable. I never knew a fish eater who needs an open piece of water to catch a fish. He isn't a bat or an owl. He can't go through trees to catch, to get a fish. And there he is. And the spurring goose, I thought they, they never went to water. There's about 50 of them right next to the water. And they're doing their thing over They've never been there before. Partridge, pheasant, guinea fowl. I've never seen them at the water on the boat like they are now, on that pilot area. It's a complete explosion of, of diversity. It is really nice to see. That's what we've got. So there's your palmet. You know this palmet really looks sick next to the boat? Here it is. And we've got some private guy that we asked, and he, he knows how to reproduce this from seed, by the way. They've got 2,000 plants that we can go for. We, he had them for sale. And then we have the social side. We've got the best development team, the new team, in the park club. You see that guy? That's Wayne August. He used to be a Springbok fan. <coughs> he started that club in the Berg. And he, he got that prize, 500,000 Rand, for his efforts in developing pattern. It's the best club probably in South Africa at the moment. And they're aiming for the 2016. And with that, Kim, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm not too sure about the funding coming to you, but um, is there any questions? And we will have to keep them somewhat short. Um, the other
Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, I just want to find out to, uh, as a private sector doing a good job like you are doing. Uh, do you have any the, the priorities that you are doing? Uh, the priority in terms of the safety of the employees that are employing you as they are actually giving a good productivity and that, that you are part of. Especially looking at the photos that you show us that the safety uh, it's seemingly you are not considering it. Uh, at all, so if, if not be minimized uh, uh, in terms of the safety of the academic years. Thank you. So I think I got your question as efficiency of the system. Is, is that correct? Yeah, safety of the beneficiaries that they are, you are, they are waiting there. Uh, of the beneficiaries? Yes. Yes, now the beneficiaries, unfortunately, I employed them beforehand in the pilot project. And I can see they're a lot happier with the private entrepreneur than they were with me. <laughs> they also got a better job. They don't have to wait at the end of February when they don't get paid. And they don't have to wait till May or even June before they get paid again. They get paid right away. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even know. Uh, but we are all running very yeah. I am really... Just quickly. Okay, okay. I, this is very, very really? exciting. Okay, okay. Replacing finite fuel for generation of power by an infinite source. That is something for the future. And taking out the blue gums to do that. In 94 we cleared the blue gums out around the Mariko Bushfeld Dam. And they had to adapt the uh, computer program, the, uh, the evaporation figure by 23.4%. That dam was empty from 82 to 96. 94 we took the trees out and it followed up. 95, it was at 50%, which it just went past on the way down this time, last week. Then it was on the way up. It's overflowed every summer since 1996. It even overflowed this summer, but it's going to be empty completely in two months' time. Because the blue gums are sticking out around the dam, above the indigenous uh, uh, trees and things again. So that's going to be tackled again. Infinite fuel for the future. I love it. And you must add Japan to that list of China and <laughs> India and so on. I stood at Richard's Bay when they got these chippers blowing the chips into the ships. Yes. And I asked the guy, where's the ship going to? And he said, it's going to Japan. And I said, uh, 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 you know, uh, and uh, they, they are regular, no, every day. He says, and when it comes back, it brings a load of Toyotas. <laughs> Japan is on the list. And if you take from and Tunis River uh, in the Western Cape, when we cleared that from, from uh, blue gum trees, it's the first time in two years in a row that it has flowed throughout the summer in 80 years. I mean, it's unbelievable.